What's up, Magic players? It's Doyle, your host here on Doyle Prime MTG. Today, I would like to showcase the greatness that has come from the new cycle of monocolored partner commanders from Commander Legends. I've always wanted to have a Hydra Tribal deck, and today I have finally settled on a pair of Temur partners. Forests, islands, mountains, plains, and swamps. The multiverse is all that is, or ever was, or ever will be. There is a tingling in the spine, a faint sensation, as if a distant memory of walking from plane to plane. Our lives have been forever changed, as if by magic. Embark with me on this journey to eternity. Experience the true power of mind over matter, as we ignite your spark and traverse into the Magic Multiverse. I've battled with this deck since the original Partner Commanders came out. Since the Commander Legends release, I've been finally happy enough with the Commander to build a Hydra deck. I've tried Animar, Galanra and Bruce Tarl, uh, Zaxara, Marath, I just couldn't figure out how to get the speed that I was looking for until I stumbled upon Thrasios paired with Elena Kessig Trapper. I realized that these are the colors that I want to be in for the Hydras that I want to play. But most importantly, I could theoretically use the mana from Elena to either draw cards through Thrasios or to beef up another Hydra and near double my mana. As it turns out, this frame is a great way to build any Temur large creatures kind of deck. If you'd instead like to play dragons in Temur, this works. If you'd instead like to play generic big creatures without a tribe restriction, this works too. This partner pair can play heavily into combo magic and CEDH, but this deck tech focuses on exploring those fun decks that may otherwise not have had an opportunity to exist. Just for review, Thrasios Triton Hero costs blue-green for a 1-4 Merfolk Wizard that lets us pay 4 to scry 1, reveal the top card of our library, and if it's a land we put it into play, and if it's not a land we put it into our hand. Yeah, broken. Elena Kessig Trapper costs 4 and a red for a 4-5 Human Scout that taps to add red to our mana pool equal to the highest power among creatures we control that entered the battlefield this turn. The idea here is that we can spend our mana on something large like a Hydra, or we can use the mana generated from Elena to draw cards and play lands with Thrasios, or even cast another large Hydra. So we have ramp, big mana, and card draw, all in our command zone. This is the kind of theme that makes for a powerful and versatile shell. That being said, the commanders don't do everything on their own. Let's begin with the ramp package as we do when we duel. As far as mana rocks go, I've only included Soul Ring and Arcane Signet. These are quite familiar to us, so I will move on. Next, we will include some one-for-one -one dorks with Birds of Paradise, Elvish Mystic, Lanawar Elves, and Findhorn Elves. A pricey yet worthwhile include is a Bloom Tender, which costs one and a green for a creature that taps to add a color to our mana pool for each color of permanent that we control. In this deck, that'll be up to three total mana. This is easily replaced with a Leaf Kindred or an Elysian Caryatid. Galanra, Collar of Wildwood, costs 2 and a green for an elf which taps for a green, and if we spend that green on a spell with CMC 6 or greater, we draw a card. It is often important to include as many cards that bridge these categories as possible. Solvala, Heart of the Wild, is a great include helping us draw cards and produce great amounts of mana. One could include a basic mana dork in this place, or even a Lifecrafter's Bestiary, whichever helps you move forward in your playgroup. Next up, we have some Sorcery Land Ramp with Rampant Growth, Nature's Lore, Three Visits, and Farseek. A notable addition here, once the Kaldheim Snow Slow Duels are released, could be Into the North. We will also include Cultivate and Rampant Growth for good measure. These are incredible plays when we have so many turn 1 ramp capabilities. Though the following do not ramp us directly, I find it hard in a deck with Thrasios not to include Seedborn Muse. For 3 green green, we get a creature that untaps all of our permanents on each other player's untap step. The same can be said for Training Grounds and Biomancer's Familiar. These three cards together are included solely to accelerate Thrasios, as they cut the cost of his ability in half, and Seedborn Muse allows us to activate him many times per turn cycle. 
Animar, Soul of the Elements, costs blue, red, green for a creature that gets a 1 1 counter on it whenever we cast a creature spell. And it makes our creatures cost less to cast for each 1 1 counter that it has. Also, included for big mana alongside Elena, I have included a Gaia's Cradle. This isn't necessary and could easily be replaced with Growing Rights of Itlamok or even just a forest. Though the Cradle is easy to fetch up with Uvenwald Hydra on ETB, which would certainly trigger our draw enchantment simultaneously. Of course, Thrasios is not the only way to draw cards, simply the way to draw when we don't have creatures to play. Opening our draw gambit also bridges the gap between ramp and card draw. The Great Henge is an artifact that is so strong in these kinds of large creature decks, providing consistent ramp, life gain, and card draw. Of course, Galanra and Silvala provide a similar advantage, but not nearly at the level of the Henge. Now since we will be dropping a lot of fatties on the board, we will include some permanents that draw us cards when they enter, with Elemental Bond, Kavu Lair, Garrick's Uprising, and Kiora Behemoth Beckoner. In addition, we have Temur Ascendancy, which does the same thing, but it also gives our creatures haste. And also, although it doesn't draw us cards, we will include Rhythm of the Wild to give us another opportunity at that haste. Next we have Guardian Project, which draws us cards for non-token creatures entering our battlefield and Beast Whisperer, which draws us cards whenever we cast creature spells, and Thunderous Snapper will draw us cards whenever we cast spells of CMC 5 or greater. Rishgar's Expertise will draw us a bunch of cards, and even allow us to slam down another spell of CMC 5 or less for free. And to close with a bit of synergy, Hydroid Crisis costs X blue-green for a Hydra that enters with X counters, and draws us cards and gains us life equal to half X rounded down. Also, Lifeblood Hydra will draw us cards and gain us life when it dies, equals to its power. Lastly, a bit of card advantage and card selection with Genesis Hydra, which costs X green 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 for a Hydra that gets us an extra free permanent from the top X cards of our library with mana cost X or less. Next up, we have our control section. We will focus on controlling our opponent's fields as our commanders help give us more control over our own. But the one creature we do have that exudes control over our own field is Temur Sabretooth, which allows us to recast our big creatures and re-trigger our payoffs. It's also quite helpful defensively. Nature's Claim destroys an artifact or enchantment for a green mana. Oko, Thief of Crowns is great, or the more budget Beast Within. Steelbane Hydra also destroys artifacts and enchantments. Have an opponent who plays dragons or another flying tribal deck? Look no further than Whip Tongue Hydra, which destroys all flying creatures on entering the battlefield. Gargos, Vicious Watcher, fights opponent's creatures when our creatures enter the battlefield. Voracious Hydra fights one of our opponent's creatures, or doubles in size, when it enters the battlefield. Some cards that I just can't wait to whip out in this deck are Terror of the Peaks and Warstorm Surge each dealing X damage to any target when our creatures enter the battlefield, where X is that creature's power. This removes creatures, planeswalkers, and players all the same. Lastly, Ulash the Hate Seed and, bridging into our Big Bad Hydra finishers, Apocalypse Hydra, could each grant us some spot removal with their damage abilities. Next up, we smash our opponents down with Big Bad Hydra creatures. Miss Cutter Hydra helps us surprise our opponents with natural green haste and protection from blue, and it can't even be countered. Hungering Hydra and Protean Hydra get bigger when they're damaged, so long as they survive the damage. Hooded Hydra gives us snake tokens equal to its power when it dies. Primordial Hydra gets exponentially bigger on each of our turns. Savageborn Hydra has double strike and can increase in its size. Vasswood Hydra allows us to recycle its counters for our other Hydras. Mana Gorger Hydra starts out small and gets bigger whenever a player casts a spell. Hero's Bane gets exponentially larger each time we can pay 4 mana. Iron Scale Hydra gets larger instead of taking damage. Phyrexian Hydra is nasty in this deck, bringing out a little bit of unexpected infect. Hydra Broodmaster makes way too many Hydras for way too much mana. Hydra Omnivore deals damage equally among our opponents. And Kalni Hydra can often be free to cast for an 8-8 Trampler. Last but not least, our win more card, our final closer, Finale of Devastation. We can easily find a large Hydra, most notably Colonian Hydra, to the battlefield to give our creatures a huge buff and devastate the board. Not to mention Colonian Hydra doubles all the plus one plus one counters on all of our creatures when it attacks. So for lands we have... Basically, a Temur fixing mana base, with 
Breeding Pool, Cinder Glade, Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Hinterland Harbor, Ketria Trihome, Mana Confluence, Rejuvenating Springs, Rootbound Crag, Spire Garden, Steam Vents, Stomping Ground, Taiga, Training Center, Tropical Island, and Volcanic Island. So I know this isn't a budget mana base, but it is what I used for construction. You could also run some cheaper lands, or you could just proxy. Personally, I prefer to proxy. And that about wraps it up for this deck tech. I hope you enjoyed the video. You'll find the link to the full deck list on architect.com in the description, complete with the maybe board. Let me know in the comments below if you would take this deck in a different direction, or if there are any key includes that I missed. Cheers, and happy casting. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button, and also share it with your friends. If you want to see more videos like these, or hear me ramble about how to navigate this magic multiverse, go ahead and click that subscribe button to stay up to date on the latest from me, Doyle Prime, and the happenings throughout Magic the Gathering. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next video.